Welcome to part two of the Using Azure Service Bus series. It's a short series I'm doing focused with Mass Transit and Azure Service Bus. Uh, in this second installment of this series, I'm gonna talk about message sessions and how to use the built-in scheduling capabilities of Azure Service Bus. So we're gonna take the current example that we have and what we're going to do is we're going to add a state machine. And for that state machine, we are going to use the message session repository, which allows us to use session state within Azure Service Bus to store a Saga state related to the messages that that Saga correlates to. So in this case, I'm looking for that order shipped event, and I'm going to use that event to initiate a Saga that waits for 20 seconds, and if the order hasn't shipped, which is a new event that I've added, it will transition to a state saying that the shipment is overdue. Now, obviously 20 seconds in this, you know, gotta have it now culture is pretty quick, but it, it works well for the demo. So in this case, I'm looking at two different events, order shipped and order submitted. I'm also adding a schedule in the state machine that says, hey, after 20 seconds, give me this event called for the schedule timeout. And I'm doing a couple things here. I'm correlating it by the order ID. I'm also telling it not to create a topic for it because I don't want it published. I don't want it to show up as a topic in Azure Service Bus. So that's a fairly recent feature with um, Mass Transit is the ability to not configure a topic and binding for a scheduled event. Um, the rest of the state machine code is pretty simple here. I have, I handle the order submitted event, shows that I'm monitoring the shipment. I handle out of order events. I handle timeout events, all of the different things that could happen. Uh, ultimately just kind of giving us the ability to see that that session state is tracked as that order is passed around. Now that state machine uses the order state, which just has the current state, a correlation ID, and then because I'm using schedule in the state machine, I have to have a place to store that scheduled message token ID. And that's what I have there. Uh, I also created a definition for this because the Saga definition, to use session state, you have to tell the queue when it's configured that you require a session. So in this case, in the Saga definition, in the configure Saga method, I'm checking if that endpoint configurator is a service bus receive endpoint configurator. And if it is, I'm setting require session to true. So that will force it to specify that attribute when creating the queue. Um, so that's it, that's the definition. That is to get that all configured up. I'm adding the state machine in the add mass transit section. I'm specifying the message session repository. And then I don't do anything special because configure endpoints will have it. Now, one of the things to make this work is I have to have a session ID property set when the message is delivered to a topic or a queue. And to do that, I'm using the send topology and the session ID convention that's in place for Azure Service Bus. So when I configure the bus, I'm configuring the send topology for both order submitted and the monitor order shipment timeout, which is that scheduled message that's sent, so that it is formatting that session ID based on content within the message. In this case, I'm using the order ID and I'm just doing a two string. Um, that allows that so that when any message is published or sent, it will get that session ID applied to the outbound message that goes to Azure Service Bus. Um, other than that, that's how the worker is set up. And if I go out and run it, I can see that it's gonna come up, it's gonna configure the endpoints. You can see some previous runs there from where I was testing it, but not a big deal. Uh, and now it's up and running, that worker is up and running. Now the changes on the producer side, I didn't have to change anything to API to do that, to the order controller, because I didn't add anything to the order. But what I did add is I added a new controller called shipment controller that lets me publish that order shipped event so that I can say that an order has been shipped because otherwise I have no way to really do it. I don't have a shipping system and I'm just using iPublish endpoint to publish that. I don't need anything special. However, because I am setting up mass transit to do that, I need to again specify that send topology to say when order shipped is sent, use that same session ID formatter to format that order ID out as a string. 
so that that session ID gets applied when the message is published. Uh, so I can run that here and I'll just F5 through that. You'll see that the web app will start up. It'll kick off Swagger. I already have Swagger going over here, so I'm gonna leave it right here. And I have my submit order already set up and ready to go. So I'm gonna execute that. And once it connects up and does its thing, I'm gonna get my 202 back. And I can see in the output window that I had the submit order consumer got its order submission received. The order submitted consumer still output that that event was received. That's that subscription endpoint. And now you can see my new Saga has picked up and it says it's monitoring that order shipment. And sure enough, 20 seconds after that order was uh, detected and that Saga was initiated, that scheduled message that was put in then says, hey, the shipment is overdue. It's been 20 seconds. And that's, that's correlated back to that same session ID, which then uses that Saga state from the session state that's part of a session-based queue. Now I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna actually do a shipment for that. And I'm just gonna publish that shipment event. And now we can see that the state machine was brought up again. It correlated to that session ID. And I got a shipment completed with the overdue flag saying, hey, I was overdue, but it did finally ship. Now let's change, the, let's change it up and try to be fast here and we'll see how quickly I can type. We'll change a couple of letters here. We'll change that to F and we'll change this to F. And now when we execute, we can see that we got the order submitted, we monitored the order shipment, and then right after that, we got the shipment completed because we published that event. Now if we were to wait 20 seconds, which it won't matter, because in the state machine, I believe I, now I don't know if I unschedule, I might not. So we'll wait and see. Um, but because that shipment is completed, it, it's already reached that point in the state machine where it doesn't matter anymore. Uh, and I think it actually just ignores that timeout because I'm actually not even caring at that point. Uh, if I hide this down here, you can see that when the shipment is complete, I actually ignore the monitor timeout. Now, one other thing I could do in here in the state machine if I wanted to, is I could actually just come in and put, um, so when the order is actually shipped, I could do an unschedule, and I think it's called the monitor timeout. And what that would do is if there was currently a message scheduled, it was unschedule it. And so that's, that's kind of what that would do there. Um, but anyway, that's um, how to use sagas and saga session state. I kind of glanced over the scheduler stuff because it really isn't super complicated. I don't do it in here. I'm not using the scheduler in the API, but in the worker, all I did was add two lines. I added the, oops, I added the add service bus message scheduler so that it's available in the container via iMessage scheduler. And then I also, right after I configured the host, I said use service bus message scheduler. And this will make that scheduler available for any of the scheduling endpoints, you know, scheduled redelivery or sagas that are doing scheduled message delivery. So, so that's, that's really what I wanted to cover in this one, session state and schedulers. Um, again, Azure Service Bus has a lot of really cool features that Mass Transit makes it easy to take advantage of. Uh, stay tuned for further episodes where I'll go into some other details, but for now, thanks for joining.